Hello once again, and uh, today's the day, or today's the video, uh, where we're supposed to fire up this radio and see if it's going to work. But before we do, I need to do a little bit more work to the Roto Wave Magnet Antenna, is the official name for it. And you'll notice I had mentioned once before that these uh, uh, wires were loose on the loop antenna, and that I was going to super glue them back in place. Now, the more I thought about that, I said, you know, there's got to be an easier way to super glue each of these wires individually, and it, w it wouldn't look too cool even if I did, uh, even though it's going to be inside of a box. So what I decided to do was come up with some easy way to hold the wires down, and then just use good old liquid tape to paint on top of the wires, and hold them in place until they dry. So let's see how that's done. For the weights, I'm going to go ahead and just use a couple of old batteries, just like that. A couple of batteries, C-cell batteries, and then we'll make sure everything is in place the way it's supposed to be. And it is. Oop, we got one out. There we go. Okay, we got each one where it's supposed to go. Now we'll take the old liquid tape, which is nothing more than black type stuff, just like it had on it originally. We're just going to go ahead and paint that on there, just like it was originally. Just like that. Just glob it on there. Let's recoat the whole thing. There we go. And down here in the corner, I think it's this corner down here, looking a little rough. Maybe we ought to put a little bit more that's left on the brush on there so we don't have the same problem. There. Let's see how the other end looks. Well, the other end looks real good, well coated, except for one. Let's go ahead and coat that on there. There we go. Okay, she's nice and dry, nice and solid. Take off the old batteries. <coughs> we'll slip this thing back inside the box and uh, hopefully hook it all up on my bench. It'll probably be another day or two from now. Uh, before I can actually clear the bench off enough. I've got, my wife's got me doing other things, but that's okay. Uh, we'll, we'll get that baby hooked up, and hopefully uh, it'll put out a little musica. In order to get the radio set up on the bench, I'm, of course, going to need the speaker. So it's time to take it out of the cabinet. Uh, as it turns out, this one's only held in by three screws, and as usual, I don't know why it is, but every console radio I've ever seen, this, the, the nuts holding the speaker in are always hand loose. I don't even need a wrench to take these things off. I've never seen a console radio yet that I had to use a wrench on. Once you get the speaker removed, stop whatever you're doing. Don't do anything else until you get a piece of cardboard cut and placed on the front of the speaker cone. If you don't, trust me, you're going to be sorry. It may not be today, it may not be on the next radio, but it will be on one of the future radios. Get yourself a piece of cardboard. I have this great big piece. Put your uh, speaker face down and then just take a marker pen. You don't have to be accurate all that much. Just go around it, whatever shape it might be. And that's it. I'll take a pair of scissors and I'll cut that baby out and then we'll come back and do the next part. Okay, the cardboard's been cut and, what we're, and the speaker's turned upside down and what we're going to do is place the cardboard on it like so and take the old tape and tape it on there. And when I take the tape, I'm going to roll it from the cardboard down over the edge, tape it to the widest part on the basket. You don't want to take any chances of your fingers going through the back and punching through the cone. Now this will protect you uh, from accidentally sticking your fingers through the cone in this direction, but keep in mind you can still do it in the rear. Fully exposed back there. Be careful. If you want, you can even put some cardboard across there. It would be a thinner, maybe paper plate thickness cardboard. Cut them out, cover them up. Uh, I like to store these things, if they're not being stored in a cabinet, I like to store them in a cardboard box until I'm ready to use them and keep them out of the way off the bench. I'll tell you what, they don't sound very good when you've stuck your meat hooks through the cone. Kind of strange about that. 
and there's the finished product. I don't have to worry about sticking my fingers through that. You know, the good thing about these things is uh, you can go ahead and after you get done, you remove them and you, you get a little stockpile of these things. Uh, one for just about every shape and form speaker that, that you might run into. And you just kind of reach up, filter through them, find the one you want, and just put it back down there and reuse it until eventually, you know, it gets torn up. And then, you, of course, have to cut a new one. Well, let's, let's go to the next step now concerning the hookup of this radio. It is now time to put the pedal to the metal. I've got everything hooked up here. Now these uh, bass and treble control, I haven't cleaned them yet like they should be. So I just hooked them up just for uh, electrical purposes. I really probably don't need to hook them up, but uh, I went ahead and did it anyway. And they actually sit like this, the treble, and then the bass would sit over here in the cabinet on each side of the radio. And I've got the speaker hooked up. Everything is kind of hooked up with the wires and alligator alligator wires. We kind of call this gator wires. Uh, the, the, uh, the dial lamps are gatored in. I just hooked them from you know the ground connection up to a ground connection on the chassis. I just used the top of the uh, I just used the top of the uh, uh, variable capacitor. All right, what I'm going to do is I'm going to turn it on. We're going to watch the voltage come up on this gauge over here. And most importantly, we're going to watch the current draw here. And hopefully, we'll get some noise out of this thing. All right, here goes, guys. Let me turn it on, I think. Now, the way this works is uh, in the center. One, two, three. In the center is radio. And... This and uh, let me see. Yeah, this little switch one way is the turntable, and the other way is the radio. And then, of course, over here is just the uh, on off and volume. So, here goes. I've got it on. I'll keep the volume down low. You'll notice I've got knobs on this thing. I don't like turning on a radio I've just worked on. And and even though I'm very familiar with the entire thing, I don't I don't like turning on the radio without having knobs there. A lot of, I see so many people just grab bare knobs and start turning them after, on after the first power up. I, I consider that dangerous. If there's voltage, heavy voltage coming from this uh, transformer to the chassis, even if it's plugged into a an isolation transformer, an isolation transformer can only do so much. You you will get a zap. So I always like to put these are of course not the knobs that go on it the originals are on uh, where we're damaged and I have reproductions I've ordered they should be in in a few days so okay guys let's keep our let's keep our fingers crossed old Rocky my dog out there he's keeping his finger crossed here we go here we go I'm gonna bring it up to you see now we're up to 30 volts we're watching this one right here and our current draw is a little over 0.1. You now see that dog wouldn't bark until it was time to start this video. <laughs> All right, here we go. We're up to 90 volts. We're looking real good on the current draw. We're less than 0.2 still. Starting to climb a little bit. Let's let the filaments come online completely here. Starting to climb a little bit. It's up to 0.2. Starting to go over 0.2. And eh, not too bad. Not too bad. Still sitting at 90 volts. I really like using a uh, a meter to work with my radios. This dim bulb tester stuff, uh, it just never was for me. I want to know exactly what's being drawn by this radio. A bulb tells me nothing. It just tells me what's bright, what's not bright. That's kind of old-fashioned stuff in my mind. Let's take it up to 100 volts. Alright, we're still below 0.3 amps. Not bad. Let's turn up the volume here. Oh, I got some dial lights lighting up. Look at there. Woo-hoo-hoo. Woo-hoo. Tells me at least that part of my transformer is good. Let's turn up the volume see if we get any noise. Oh, I do believe I hear people talking. 
so far so good. Let's take it up to 110 volts, 115. Turn it down just a little bit. Let's shut off this light. It's probably affecting it. All right, we're just a little over about three point, or about 0.35 amp draw. At 115. Remember, I put a power resistor in here so I can go ahead and go over on the voltage here because it'll only be about 117. So I'm going to go up to about 123. Current draw is still good. Below 0.4. That's great. That's really good for six tubes. One, two, three, four, five, and six. Yeah. Let's crank up the volume. See what we get. Well, let's tune it in a little bit here. Would you be a Hall of Famer at five Alright, let's tune it a little more and see what we get. This is broadcast band. I, at least that's what it's supposed to be. I have no idea if the wafer switches are connected properly underneath there. They look okay. Not too shabby. I think we can call this baby workable. Let's go a little bit more. Let's go a little bit more and see what we get. One of the problems with this camera is it may not sound too uh, too loud to me out here, but the camera really picks it up and makes it loud. So if it seems louder than it should be, and you, you might be reaching for your volume control knob on your speakers, I'm sorry. That's let's go a little bit further here. Thing, but watch out for this title. You know the, the author's name. Uh, I wanted to ask you a little bit about the characters and, and, and because what about shortwave? Let's try shortwave. I think that is. I think that's to the right all the way, one notch. Let's see if we get anything on shortwave. If we don't, then we're turn the volume a little bit here. Well, there's shortwave. Well, I'm pretty happy so far. That's right. I just reaped what I sowed. <laughs> well, I'm real happy with that. I'm real happy with that. I think, uh, I think we can call this, uh, I say that. Because you just this restored. I just got home from work. It's about 10:45 at night, and while I was uh, at work, the new spongy rubber mounts for the chassis have arrived. Uh, I got four in a package. They're made by RenovatedRadios.com. Renovated Radios, and uh, I also got the two brand new knobs that were needed. And instead of having it all hollowed out in the back, these have nice uh, eighth-inch drilled sh uh, drilled holes, which is the size of the shaft. It's an eighth-inch shaft, and they have set screws that uh, will go down and uh, tighten against that eighth-inch shaft. Much stronger knob, much stronger. I'm very happy with these. So uh, I'm sitting here tuning in a few stations at night trying to pick up a little bit of country music I happen to like that at night in particular uh, all I've got to do now is put a dial string on and uh, which reminds me I had something here I wanted to show you concerning that dial string yeah here it is I went down to Walmart the other day and looked around and I found this uh, braiding cord over in the uh, kids jewelry section and that is, and, and, and it had black, and it came in brown and tan, you know, which doesn't buy, I think it was $1.97. I tried to break this stuff in the store. I could not break it. So I'm going to try to take some of this black off of here, 
and use it as dial string. And I'll tell you what, it's, it's certainly going to be strong enough, no doubt about that. And uh, we'll see just how well it works. It should work fine. And I didn't have to pay shipping costs and enormous prices and all that stuff. Braiding cord kid, for kids' jewelry, for the beads. For beads. I, I, I was told that you could get regular bead cord, but I couldn't, I couldn't find that. So I went to the kids' jewelry section, and there was this. So I'll give it the old college try. I'm willing to try anything to save a few bucks here and there. Especially, it's got to be, it's got to meet certain standards. You know, it's got to be strong enough so I know it'll last. And uh, once we get the dial cord on, then we'll put the dial scale and the needle back in, and we'll be just about ready to mount this thing back in the chassis uh, or back in the cabinet. I've got to pick up some screws tomorrow uh, at uh, my favorite hardware store and get those babies ready to go. Well this has been kind of a fun restoration. Incidentally the uh, treble and bass switches uh, that I'll be working on. I think I've come up with a fix for that one that had the broken clip that held it in the cabinet. But they've since been cleaned. Contacts have been cleaned. It's ready to go. We'll show you that on the next video. Well, propagation seems to be a little weak tonight. Until next time, this is John. Initiating shutdown sequence.